Hey guys, John Rettinger here with an unboxing for you of the BlackBerry Curve 8900 for AT&T. This will run you $199 after $100 mail-in rebate on a two-year contract. Now we've seen this device for T-Mobile. This is the AT&T variant. This slots in right below the bold. It lacks 3G, but it does have the bold's high-res display and a little different keyboard layout, as you guys will see, in addition to Wi-Fi and GPS. Let's go ahead and dig in and see what we got. Go ahead and hack it open. There we go. Got some, some press material. Lift the box itself. Here we go. Throw that off to the side. All right, so here is the BlackBerry Curve 8900. It certainly looks relatively similar to T-Mobile's offering, but AT&T's network and some of the bundled options in here make it a very different phone. So it's got Wi-Fi letting you know that it is a quad band edge phone so you can use it anywhere in the world. Obviously since it's a Blackberry it does email probably the best out there and it has GPS. I'll tell you what's in the box but we're gonna see those in a minute. Let's take a look at some of the specs. Quad band edge like I mentioned 4.29 by 2.36 by 0.53 inches weighs 3.87 ounces it's got a relatively capable 512 megahertz processor. Uh, talk time, they're saying is up to five and a half hours and standby time up to 15 days. I guess you get that high standby time when you're not connected to a 3G network, which is certainly a battery suck. It's got a high resolution 480 by 360 pixel color display, which is actually very nice. 256 megabytes of flash memory, external micro SD, Wi-Fi with 802.11 B and G, and built-in GPS, and the rest of the BlackBerry features that people love, BlackBerry Messenger and the awesome email client. Let's go ahead and dig in and see what we got here. And this was just released about a week and a half to two weeks ago. So BlackBerry Curve 8900 getting started guide. BlackBerry user tools. This has the desktop management software on it. Important information about hearing aid compliance ratings. Here's the phone, and as usual, we'll push that off to the side for just a second. Then see what's under the... We've got a little slip case. Let's see if it's leather or what it's made out of. It is not a leather case, but it's a pseudo leather case. And this has a built-in magnet, so when you slide your device in, it automatically will turn off the screen, which is very nice. But it does not have a holster, so it's not going on your belt. We have a USB cable. It looks like they are using micro USB with this. It's nice that there's a standard. Here is a pair of stereo headphones with a 3.5 millimeter headset jack, since the device has that, and just your standard wall charger box. So let's take a look at the actual phone. Here we go. And actually, is a it's a very nice looking phone. It's got a very nice weight to it and heft to it. Seems like the battery's already in there. So here it is. It's got your full front-facing QWERTY keyboard with your typical array of BlackBerry keys, your send button, your BlackBerry button, your scroll ball that you can push in to select, back button, end button and you've got all of the rest of your hotkeys that you're used to on a BlackBerry. I'm going to push the camera in just a little bit more. On the left side of the device, you've got a programmable, <coughs> excuse me, a programmable hard button, and on the right side, you've got your volume rocker up and down, another programmable button, your micro USB port, and your 3.5 millimeter headset jack. The back of the device has that pseudo metal feel, but it's actually plastic flanked by a 3.2 megapixel camera with flash, but no self-portrait mirror. So let's go ahead and peel off the front plastic, and we'll power this thing on and see what it looks like. That was the only plastic that was on there. Let's go ahead and turn this on. You turn it on by using the end button. And one thing I like about Blackberry is they are very quick on. Now let's see if there's a SIM card in here. See the battery is about to die. Nope, there is a SIM card in the device, and you get that bold-esque interface, sort of the new BlackBerry OS, and the high-res screen does look very nice. 
So as I do with most phones, I'll use this for a week or so and give you guys a full review and see how it compares to the other phones in AT&T Stable and compares to the other BlackBerry Curves 8900s out there. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. For exclusive content, be sure to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash John4Lakers. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.